Welcome to Motivational Monday. Today we're talking about controlling the situation with the market with your individual clients. This can affect how you sell and in fact how much you sell and that's why it's so important for us to cover it today. Be right back. All right, so we all know the market's a little crazy right now. Things are uncertain. We're not sure how the interest rate is going to really affect the market. And then you have high home values, which could cause a panic in some people. And it can be really scary to have conversations with your clients. Maybe they're, the buyers are dropping like flies and the listings aren't flying off the shelves like they used to. So it's a really different dynamic, especially if you're newer in the industry. So I just wanna equip you with some tools and strategies that you can use to really combat any of those struggles that you're facing with your clients and control the situation so that you can stay in front of your clients, stay in front of the curve, and then also make sure that you are providing value for your clients and not letting them fall prey to some of the negative talk that they're going to hear out in the market today from both their friends and other real estate agents. There's a lot to think about. So we're going to go over three strategies that you can use to really make sure your customers are on a positive mindset, make sure you are controlling the situation and that you don't lose control of it and lose the deal as a result. So tip number one is I talk a lot about this. It's, it's all about your mental mindset as an agent. You know, they say in sales, people can smell when you're having a bad day or if you haven't had a sale in a while. We have this different air about us when we're desperate is the quote unquote term. And a hungry salesperson is not an effective salesperson. It's just a it's it's a known fact. So you really have to if you are experiencing a struggle with the market and you have a fear that's in your gut about what's going to happen and what to expect and not to expect they can smell that. So your number one goal is to going to be to control yourself and control your mental mindset. And one very important way that you can do this is simply by educating yourself. Now, this is not going to be like the 2000, 2000, 2007, 2008 crashes. It's not the same thing. And I think people automatically assume that it will be. And that's a huge danger, especially if you're the person working on the other end. They're like, oh, this is going to be like the market crash, you know, back two decades ago. No, it's different. It is absolutely different. And you need to know in your mind why it's different. So do your research, make sure that you understand what's happening in the market and how it differentiates. So you can go to journals, you can talk to other experienced agents. It's the experienced agents who've been through a crash like 2007 and 2008 who can tell you this is not the same. Everybody's sitting back, relaxed. If they've been through 2008, this will be just fine. We'll have a rocky couple of months, maybe a year, and then things will settle down. So there's no fear there if you understand and have the knowledge to explain it to your clients why it's still a good time to buy. So educate yourself, reach out to other agents who've been in the industry for a long time. What's great about experienced agents is that they're not intimidated by other people. It's usually the people that are not necessarily successful that are scared to share. So you want to talk to those individuals who've been down this path before, who appreciate having educated realtors on the other side of the deal. And even if they're not in your same brokerage, you would be surprised at how many people are willing to help. So that is tip number one, get control of your mental real estate. Make sure that you are writing the story in your own mind before you try to rewrite the story for your customers. And now let's talk about your customers with tip number two, and that's going to be to use positive language and positive nonverbal cues. My master's degree is actually in communication, and this is a huge factor when it comes to the psychology of sales. Most people don't realize that how you hold yourself, how you 
shrink your eyebrows or tilt your head or lean forward or backwards communicates a lot of meaning to the people in their sphere. It's actually between 70 to 93% of our communication that's nonverbal. So if you're putting off these positive vibes and you're saying, well, the market's not nearly as bad. Uh, there's some great things going on, but you're like, oh, the market's not really as bad. It's, there's, there's always opportunity. It's a great time to buy or sell your home and you feel shifty about it, you're going to communicate that. So maybe film yourself on camera. I know everybody hates being on camera, but film yourself and look and see what kind of cues you're giving off. If you're doing role play, it's a perfect opportunity to do this because you're at your most nervous and your, your bad habits non-verbally are gonna come out, which is great to know. So film yourself, see what that communication style is giving off. And it's not just the physical body, it's the vocal tones that are also considered in nonverbal. So pay attention to both your body gestures and your vocal tone and get those under control. And then think about the positive language that you should be using. So instead of, yeah, I know this market's kind of crazy, maybe instead shift it or pivot to what's great about this market is, blah, blah, blah. What I see happening in the near future is blah, blah, blah. And again, it's the vocal tone and the positive energy that you're coming through with your with your audio and your speech that is going to control how your clients see the market. Because think about it, they are seeing um, all these negative things come through social media, through the news, through other realtors, and through their friends and family. So it's compounding in their head and it is up to you to make sure that from the expert in the field who has actually done their research and knows what to expect in the next few years, you are educating your clients and reassuring them that things are changing and they're not as bad as the world will tell you. Because again, the news is all about pizzazz and flair and making you rethink yourself. So pull them back from the edge and let them know, hey, I understand the market. I know the advantages of what's about to happen and I can assist you in the process. So yeah, the interest rate's a little higher, but it's actually normal. And guess what? There are some um, aftermath thoughts that'll come. I'm, a, I'm sneaking into step three here. But when we talk about step three, you have to think about what's going to happen after you leave. So once you're no longer there, people get all smooth. You're there. You're there to console them and everybody's happy. But one phone call from the wrong person or one conversation with a spouse could completely derail all of your work. So in those conversations that you have with clients, number three is you have to control and anticipate the aftermath that they're going to suffer through. Because as in sales, we've ever, have you ever heard the term spirals? And you spiral out of control and one little thought just gets it. And all of a sudden you're completely derailed from what you were planning to do. So your customers are gonna go through that same type of sales spiral but it is your job to make sure if they do have some of those core thoughts that will pop up, they you anticipate them and you attack them before you leave your clients alone. So maybe you're at the end of that conversation and everybody's smiling. Yes, we do want to put our house in the market or yes, we do want to buy. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move forward. That's great. I know it's a fantastic time to buy. Now, what you're going to see out in everyday society is that there are all these signs that right now is not a time to buy. And that's false information from people who are not educated. So if you ever do have a question about something that pops up in the news or something a friend tells you, call me and I'll I'll show you the research that states that it's incorrect, because the, the problem is most people don't understand understand what those things mean and I do and how they can be used to your advantage. So one thing that may come into play is this interest rate, right? It's a really high interest rate. It's so expensive and the, the house values are so high. Okay, so let's attack those two main thoughts. I know you may hear on the market that the interest rate's really high and then the house values are really expensive, but here's the deal. The house values are not going to plummet. They're not gonna go down. They may dip just a tad, but in the end, you'll still end out on the positive. And here's the positive part as well. These interest rates are not that high. They're actually 
average. They're, the market is just coming back to its natural uh, highs and lows. We experienced a false sense of low interest rates recently, which would have been great if you could have bought during that period, but that's probably not going to come any, come around anytime soon. That was an artificially created low interest rate. Right now, we're seeing, seeing a rise back up to the normal interest rates. And so even in the, uh, the rise in the value of the home is, is standard, and it's going to continue to rise. So yes, we're seeing a raise in interest rates and a rise in the price of houses, but there's not going to be a huge crash. You're not going to be able to find a good $150,000 starter home like you could 10 years ago or even six years ago when I bought my first starter home. It's a different market. So you really got to adjust their expectations and let them know, yes, you're going to have some naysayers out there who don't truly understand the market or who have done some minor research and are afraid, but it's not the case. But you have to get arm them a to contact you if you if they have questions, because you're the expert, you know, the local market and you have the information to help guide them if they do get quote unquote scared, um, and then not to listen to what they're seeing in the, from their friends and family who are the uneducated few. Now you're gonna have to phrase that very carefully, but you wanna plant those thoughts of, hey, if you have questions about the interest rates, call me. If you have questions about the value of the homes and how they're gonna be affected over the next few years, call me. Uh, I can show you some of the statistics that show that overall, the market is always gonna be on the rise and I'm happy to walk you through that. So there's no reason to take any kind of those fantastic um headlines that you see out of control because they're designed to give you fear and to freeze you and stop you from moving forward. But I'm here to educate you and make sure that you get the house that you deserve, the house you want and a good price. And yeah, the interest might rate might drop here in the next few years. If we get lucky again, you can always refinance. That is always an option and it may be in, in your best advantage. And that's why you keep in touch with your lender who's going to let you know when those rates drop and advise you when it's time to refinance. So those are things to always keep in mind. So wrapping up for today. First of all, control your mental real estate. Make sure you're educated and you know what's actually happening in the market and how it's not a crash. It's not going to be something that's detrimental to the industry and you don't fall prey to those false assumptions. Number two, use positive language and nonverbals when you're communicating with your clients because that's going to allow you to control the situation and practice them, guys. Most people don't practice their nonverbal cues and that's actually a detriment to them. And then finally, control the aftermath by planting some thoughts about how to deal with those negative things when they come through or when they uh, run into those objections. And then also maybe follow up with your clients just to make sure they're still on the same page in a very simple and subtle way. Hey guys, I'm really excited to explore the market with you guys. We're going to get some great offers or we're going to get a good deal on your home because it's always going to tend to increase. And let me know if you have any questions. So provide that reassurance, especially if you have skittish clients that you think are really susceptible, walk a fine line, be very cautious, but you can control this whole situation. You control the narrative. You are the salesperson. You are the expert in your field. Don't fall prey to the language that you're seeing out there in today's market. Don't let your customers fall prey to some of the false expectations about what's going to happen. Instead, you're in charge, you control the media, and you got this. All right, I love you guys. If you have questions that you'd love for me to answer as far as what obstacles to overcome, please put them in the comments, like and subscribe. I'm always here to help. And of course, if you think this is of value to you and you'd love to try out Capital Title Burleson, uh, just text me at 512-755-5070 or uh, just post something in the comments and I will get in touch with you or just put Capital Title Burleson on your contracts. That works too. And then, of course, if there is anything you need, I'm always here to help for your technical questions. I've actually opened up Brianna's Tech Academy because a lot of people send me questions and I just make a quick video that everyone can benefit from and I put it in my channel as well. So if you have any other ideas or things you're really struggling with that you think you'd like me to make a video, I am happy to do so for you. 
Uh, uh, one final thing that is really exciting. We've been waiting for this for a little while. We have officially launched mobile deposit for option and earnest money in the Capital Title Burleson office. So if you have contracts coming in, no matter where they are, because we have 100 locations and you love our escrow officers and you want to close the Capital Title Burleson, but y'all are down in, uh, let's say, San Antonio or in your buyers are up in Clear Fork, you can actually use an escrow officer that you know, like and trust and then deposit with the option to earn us money. It makes it even even easier. But I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Go out there, take control of your mindset and make sure your clients don't run wild with theirs. Bye.